Hey, hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections Coffee and Confidence. My name is Janice Fogarty, and I'm a communication strategist. This podcast is where I get to talk about all things strategic communications, including content creation and messaging. So whether you create content for your business or as your business, I know you're going to find something in each episode that contributes to your success. Thank you so much for being here today. And now, here's today's episode. Hey, and welcome to this episode of Connections, Coffee and Confidence with me, Janice. This is my end of 2022, beginning of 2023, kind of a roundup episode a little bit different from what I usually do in terms of it being, well, unscripted, which is very unlike me, but it is also a little bit of a look back and a look ahead. Things have been different in my business, in my podcast, in my life, and I get the feeling like everybody else is experiencing things a little bit differently too. I've always believed in talking about things, that information can't hurt you if it's out in the open. It's better to know things, know where things lie, where you stand. And I guess this is kind of one of those episodes where I put my money where my mouth is and talk. And the first thing that I'll talk about is the look back at the podcast. So I was curious um, what my top performing episodes were this year. And the number one solo episode was actually entitled Three Media Relations Tips You Need to Know. It got significantly more downloads, like twice as many downloads as any of my content or visibility information. And I just was not expecting that. I don't know why. I just was not expecting it because it is not something that I talk a lot about. Media relations wouldn't be my favorite topic, but evidently there's a bit of a call for it. The other thing that I noticed was that my next two top performing individual episodes were my one fix for my three rookie business mistakes and the episode entitled How Neurodivergent Affected My Career Choice. And that was, that was another hard one. That was a hard episode for me to decide to do and to do. And I won't lie, I did hold back because I felt like not everything needs to be public information, you know? But seeing that those two topics, which are fairly personal, like they're about me and my mistakes and my personal self, my family, my life, seeing that those two rounded up my top three downloaded episodes, I kind of get the feeling like maybe people are actually interested in that personal aspect, in that personal look in the the rounding out of not just a voice spouting out PR and strategy, but the actual person behind it. And that's kind of a weird feeling for me. Um, But it did encourage me to try and make this episode where I talk a bit more and tell a bit less, if you know what I mean. If I look at my top interviews for this past year, the number one downloaded episode for interviews was my second interview with Karen Howley. I've learned to trust myself. Karen is an immigration lawyer out in Alberta, and she has been building her own law firm and absolutely killing it. But what I loved about this episode with her is the fact that she's so open and she's so honest and she's very plain speaking about that that journey of growing your business. This past year, Karen opened a second location. She brought on extra people. She has created new avenues of her 
law practice. She's actually created a joint venture with a longtime colleague of hers. She's done incredible things. And this episode is what brought her to this point and what kind of planning she was doing, what kind of growth mindset stuff she had to do, what kind of just bumps and hiccups and and nerves that she was experiencing in planning for all of that growth. And she's just gone and done it. And I love the fact that this episode resonated with so many of you. And my second most downloaded episode for interviews was with Meg Hepner called She Loves the Question. Meg was absolutely bloody brilliant as an interviewer and just as a straight up person to talk to. Actually, she and I were just texting yesterday. That interview with Meg was such pleasure for me because she is a person who just says what she has to say. There's no judgment. There's no preconceived ideas. There's no there's no harm or ill will or anything. It, it is purely about giving information and sharing information and having opinions and ideas and talking about them and being willing to talk about them. And I just so enjoyed that about her and I continue to enjoy that about her. I am so thrilled that that episode landed with so many of you. When I think back about that interview with Meg, she had described herself as someone who has opinions, but doesn't necessarily believe them to be right or the only opinion, but she has them most definitely. And she is very happy to put them out there and talk about them. And I love that. Um, I had somebody the other day who was in a meeting with me for the first time and they said to me afterwards, it was the first time they had really seen me go into like full PR mode where they were like, whoa, you are totally doing the right job for you. Because when I was being asked kind of difficult questions, this person said they could see like the gears turning in my head, everything just worrying and clicking into place. And then I open my mouth and when I speak, it is something that has been put together for maximum, get the information out there, clearly make your point known, and then be quiet. There's not a lot of waste <laughs> when I am in a meeting and I need somebody to understand something. And I appreciate when someone else is willing to get out there and throw it out there and, and just engage with it. I, oh, I respect that so much. I'd love to say that I had so many interviews to choose from, but in reality, I only had a handful of interviews really this year. Um, same as last year. It's not primarily an interview show. What really stood out for me this year was I got a lot more pitches to come on my show. And I got very, very very few decent ones. Some of these pitches were very well done, just totally no research had been done to actually see what kind of show I do to see if the guest would actually be a fit. I had inquiries and conversations and tentative dates set up with other amazing women. And for one reason or another, things just fell through. And that's too bad. And I hope that we can reconnect next year. And looking forward to next year, I do have a few people I'm working up the courage to invite on my podcast to have a chat. Um, and I don't know why it's such a big thing to me to ask someone to come on. It's like, I don't know, heart in my mouth. Oh my goodness. I guess it's a bit of that imposter syndrome, even though I've kind of proven that I'm here in the, for the long haul. I am pretty serious about doing this whole podcast malarkey, uh, but it still feels like a huge ask to have somebody on. And I've only ever had somebody say no once. So I don't know, still a hang up. 
But also when I think about going ahead, I'm obviously going to have to pull out some more media relations stuff for you guys because clearly it's something you're interested in and I have not been providing you with. So maybe that's going to be more of a feature in the next few months, along with perhaps some more of the look in into my world, which frankly, people, I I don't know that you're ready for this, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. In terms of the business, it's kind of grown. Like when I think back to that episode of the one fix for my three rookie mistakes, like there was some financial loosey goosiness as well as some imposter syndrome and not following the money. So I did fix two of those. I fixed two of them in that the things that people were willing to pay me money for, I just did more of. So I made it an actual thing that I do in my business, which is content creation, which is creating your strategic communications plan to coincide with right now is social media, creating all of your messaging, creating and scheduling the posts, gathering audience reactions, tracking all your metrics. And that piece of my business has grown threefold over the last 12 months, which kind of shocks me. But, and I mean, like this is very small number still, but it's enough business for me at this point in my life where I actually felt I needed to hire somebody. So I've actually hired a part-time VA. I have somebody who helps with my books. Hello, getting rid of the financial loosey goosiness. And I've got somebody who helps me with creating content for my clients. I probably need to hire somebody to help me create content for me because my business <laughs> certainly has not been showing that kind of consistency. Uh, and that's something that I'm really, I think that contributes to the imposter syndrome where I'm like, how can I tell people to hire me as a content creator when I show nothing in my own business? It feels very inauthentic. And yet my clients get every ounce of my goodness. I never skimp. I never miss. And I am constantly looking for new ways to help get their messages out into the world. Some fun ways, some authentic ways, some ways that really portray who they are, what their businesses do. And I guess I need to get over myself and the fact that I can provide good references so maybe I need to just actually get myself out there a little bit more. In terms of launching anything this year, I didn't. Not going to lie to you, I just really didn't. And I'm kind of okay with that because honestly, I don't feel like I am the launching personality. Oh, the thought of like a big old launch just kind of overwhelms me. Not my thing. And that's okay. I'm making making my peace with that. One thing that I did create and put out there was a brand guide, actually, which doesn't really seem like it fits very much with the PR aspect, the content creation, but something that really impacts your ability to create and to speak is the knowing what you are talking about and how you want to talk about it and where you talk about it and the words that you use and the type of images that you're going to use. And especially if you're going to hire somebody or you want to get really serious about what you're doing, to have that backbone in place it just seemed like such a no-brainer to me to create something to support people in getting that fundamental bit done. And I had the pleasure of using it myself when I hired that extra person so I could create something and, and hand it over to them and be like, here you go. Here are the guidelines for what I need created and how I needed it to be created. I do all of the writing because I think that's kind of my magic. 
but I needed somebody to help me out with the the actual visuals and the scheduling. And this document was really helpful. And it made me remember to put down things that I, I wouldn't have thought to tell her. I wouldn't have remembered. And that wasn't really a launch. That was a, I created it. I put it out there. I think I may have mentioned it like twice. Eh, this would be the third time. And this is kind of moving into more of the right now and the look ahead aspect of today's episode. But I have been referred on to an ADHD clinic for diagnosis. And I know this isn't something that a lot of people would talk about, but I feel compelled to because the more I hear other people talk about their experience with this, the better I feel about what's happening with me. The reason I believe that I haven't finished my communications course, that I haven't finished my pitching course, I create these smaller workbooks or guides that are actually incredibly beneficial, but never talk about them again because I am done with them. Like I get this idea and like there's a huge rush and the follow through and the completion is phenomenally challenging. I've had the idea, I've put all the energy that I can into it. And if I don't have like a straight set of time, like three days to sit down, write a course, edit it, record it get a sales page and everything up, get it all loaded. I'm probably not getting back to it anytime soon. And that's been embarrassing. Like that is, oh my God, that is so embarrassing to me. Because it's so useful for people. I firmly, like that pitching course, oh my God, guys. The fact that you are so interested in learning about media relations. And I have this thing to explain to you how to approach the media. Um, And I just can't finish it. And it's killing me knowing that it's sitting there. Anyway, there are other things at play. And hearing people like... Denise Duffield Thomas talk about her ADHD diagnosis really made me feel like maybe I owed it to myself to get this figured out. Also, I took a job, like an outside of my office job. I'm working doing communications for a city. And I am finding it difficult to make the transition. And part of that has made me aware of how deeply I rely on my mechanisms, my my routines and my strategies to kind of keep everything afloat. Because now that I've been knocked out of my regular routines, oh, I am struggling. I am struggling. The upside to working outside of my own office with my own clients doing my thing in my comfort zone is that realization or that remembering that I have a really good skill set and a set of experiences and knowledge that not everybody else has. And I forget, I forget that. You probably do too. Like you forget that what you know how to do, not everybody knows how to do that. And I have been undervaluing both what I am capable of doing and what I do, the impact of it on other people. And I have amazing freaking clients who contact me and say, oh my gosh, look what I got. This speaking engagement, they referenced my social media or, 
this came through and they referenced this thing that you did for us. Or, you know, my clients are incredibly excited and they're so generous with what they accomplish and including me in their accomplishments. But it's that self-awareness of, oh, wow, not everybody can do what I do. And certainly they can't do it the way I do it. And I should probably be charging accordingly. So double-edged sword, this whole working outside of my office. Somebody asked me if I would be able to just bump up my prices and make the same amount of money in my private business that I do with this job outside of my home. And the short answer is no, no, I am not in a place in my personal business where I could, where I think it's a good idea to grow that much that rapidly. I don't have the systems and strategies in place. I don't have the mindset in place. I'm, I would not be ready for that much growth in a short period of time to compensate for the amount of money that this other job is offering me. And it was a really interesting moment for me to think about that, like to actually think about, could I do this? Could I make those changes in my business? Am I ready to do this? To run the numbers, to think about the mindset, to think about what I've been doing and then try and picture myself in a different place. And I don't know. You got to stay tuned on that one. I don't have any intentions of giving up my private business anytime soon. This job is a one-year contract and I plan on going through with both of them for the next year, seeing where everything takes me. I'm putting the strategies and the people in place so I can expand and it excites me. I love, I actually really love that idea of I built this. People have come to me because they want to work with me because of what I offer, because who I am, because of what I do, because how I can work with them. Gosh, that feels so good. I know you know that feeling, or you wouldn't be doing what you do. But there's something to be said for that one year of different experience and that reinforcement of the fact that proper communication skills are such an asset in so many different situations. But jumping back into my business for a moment... In terms of development and moving forward, I was in two memberships at the beginning of this year, and I have left both of them now. One of them just was not for me, and the second one probably was for me, but I wasn't using it, and I couldn't justify spending the money if I wasn't actually using it. And I did buy a course and joined another membership because I need the support around my own content creation, as I mentioned earlier. So this course and this membership are kind of my my way of developing myself and my support being for me who I am for my clients. And in case you need a me for you, I'm going to host a 90 minute long content creation group session. I'm going to work on a name for it better than that. But basically we're going to get together 90 minutes, a group of us, and you are going to create your content, whether it is podcast script, if you need to create some blog posts to get ahead of the game. If you want to create your social media content, we can come together and work on it as a group. I will be there to provide editing services, to provide proofreading services, to provide you with prompts 
and ideas in case you're a little bit stuck or you're not sure how to carry forward with an idea. I'm here to provide that for you. I want you to come for the accountability because you show up, you're going to actually do the work because everybody else is doing the work, right? Come to know that you are not the only person who is sitting down and having to like just batch create this chunk of stuff that you probably don't want to do, but no, you have to come for the access to somebody who is interested and invested in you creating content that works for you, for creating content that is actually going to move your business, your goals ahead not just out there ticking a box and yep, I posted on Instagram today. No, something that actually means something that does something for you. Come because you want to stop planning your content and thinking about your content and you want to actually make your content. So that'll be January 28th and I'll link to that in the show notes because I'm going to be honest, I haven't made the sales page yet. So check the show notes. Jumping back for a moment, back further into the business, I will say my email list has kind of remained steady. I lost a couple of people. I gained a couple of people. The people that I lost, I am happy for them to be moving on. I hope that whatever they've moved on to serves them better. For the people who have joined in, I am thrilled to bits and pieces because I love, frankly, I love knowing that there's somebody on the other side of whatever I've just created, like you listening to this podcast. Thank you. I love that. I'm not thrilled with the software that I use, um, but I am completely overwhelmed at the idea of switching back my email service provider. Frankly, I think I just need an entire website overhaul and that is connected with my email and the provision of my courses. And that, my friends, is a huge job that completely overwhelms me. But the thing is, is when you don't feel good about how you're offering something, you won't offer it. Like I hate telling people to go to my website because I don't think it's fantastic. So I don't tell them. So nobody goes. I have, however, been talking to somebody about coming and overhauling my website for me. So at least there's something in the works. Part of that overhaul will be to create the video because I don't know if you've heard my episode on the eight trends to use for success in 2023 video audio totally not going away. So there are plans afoot to get those videos created and put up and that'll be part of the overhaul. In terms of building my email list, I'm going to do the dreaded pop-up because statistically they work. I am also going to have to bite the bullet and actually tell people about the free things that I offer. Because once I actually get people on my email list, I tend to keep them and keep them for quite a while with like 40 to 50% open rates. So they're, they're reading what I write. They're engaging. I do get emails back. I just never really tell people except for on the end of this podcast. I always say, get on my weekly email list and learn how to incorporate the information that I give you in these podcasts into your actual business. So my look ahead wraps up with a slow and cautious, shall we say, growth. I'm not looking to skyrocket and grow so incredibly fast. I'm looking at longevity. I'm looking at growing wisely, having systems and processes in place to support me I am looking at doing more of the fun content creation with people because going outside of my home office has reminded me, oh my God, I love people. I love working with people. I 
love it. And people seem to enjoy working with me. I will definitely take on an extra content creation client or two this year, maybe three. And I'd love to do these content creation workshops with you guys maybe once a month for that stability, for that keeping my hand in and seeing what kind of questions you guys are asking and what you want to know about and how you're doing things and where you're doing them. I'm going to ask those women if they'll come on my podcast and have a talk about the really cool things that they do and that they know. And I want to hear more from you. What's going on? Where are you at? What are you doing? And how are you finding it? Do you love it? Is it a struggle? Are you changing? I want to know. I'm curious. So reach out. Hey, why not get on my email list? You can do that by going to janicefogarty.com forward slash email list, all in one word, and then we can stay in touch. I know, pretty slick, eh? Listen, this has been a longer than anticipated episode, kind of like a Seinfeld episode, an episode about nothing and everything all together. Thank you for sticking around this long. I certainly appreciate your time and I appreciate those of you who show up once in a while, and those of you who show up every week. It means a lot to me. I hope you have a wonderful, prosperous, happy, healthy, safe, and joyful 2023, whatever it is that you're doing. I'll be back maybe next week, maybe the week after, with another episode of Connections Coffee and Confidence. Until then, I hope you have a fan freaking rest of your day.